and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised of war, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all this which speak Galileans? And how we hear every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, in Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya, about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Greeks and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God, he read the lesson.
be with you. The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus said unto his disciples, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the fathers which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice. Because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye might be believed. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the Prince of this world cometh, and hath nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. The Gospel of the Lord.
in our companion Diocese of London cycle of prayer, we pray today for the Church of the Annunciation Marble Arch for Father Lincoln Harvey and his people. We pray for God's blessings on Craig Hutchison and David Enlow celebrating their birthdays this week, and on Father Richard Robine, sometime curate, celebrating his 14th anniversary of ordination on Saturday. Of your charity, pray for the happy repose of the souls of the faithful departed, remembering those whose anniversaries occur this week. Walter Bentley, priest and sometime rector. Edgar Fisher Wells, Jr., <coughs> a priest son of this parish. Edward Harris Derrick, Albert Shannon, Ernest Cole, John Cruz, Louise Merrill Bennett, May Duane Harper, a benefactress, Antoinette Arnost, Frederick Kimmerley, Federico Sanchez, James Edmund Boyack, Charles Hobbs, and Frederick Sidley Cummins. We pray also for the dead of the Normandy invasion, whose anniversary is tomorrow, and for, those, for all those who were in attendance at the first service in this church 153 years ago today. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord. Um, we pray also this weekend, of course, in our continuing celebration of the Platinum Jubilee of Her Majesty the Queen, which is being celebrated all over the Commonwealth this weekend and throughout the Anglican Church. We pray in thanksgiving for Her Majesty's example and for her 70 years on the throne and for all that she has accomplished and given in service to all her people. As we continue the celebration this weekend, which we began on Accession Day in February, uh, sing with me, please, if you will, the prayer which has been sung for her over these 70 years, perhaps millions of times, in every corner of the world. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I forgot to mention also that we have some special candles here for the Jubilee. Um, there's no offering asked for them, but after communion, if you like, you can light one, or after the Mass, in fact, um, praying for the Queen. There are special candles, and we hope you'll make use of them. Today we have a classic sequence of readings, which doesn't actually happen all that often, which outline an event or an occurrence vitally important, both in church history and in theology. And then the second one is our Lord himself in a gospel reading, explaining what it all means. Since we have few recorded words of his after the resurrection, apart from his first appearances identifying himself, this explanation almost always comes from the teaching of his ministry, which was obviously meant to be listened to, stored up, and then they would realize later what it meant in connection with an event. In the lesson from the Acts of the Apostles, St. Luke gives us the journalist's account of what took place. We know that the apostles were instructed by our Lord to leave the Mount of the Ascension, which I'm told is more like a hill, and go back to the Cenacle, which is just Latin for dining room, as they rented it, of course, for the Passover, and wait and pray. He did not tell Our Lady this for two reasons. I think, first of all, because he knew she would be doing that anyway, 
and secondly, because he understood the apostles would know perfectly well that such a formal prayer and waiting session, which could go on, which could go and did go on for days, nine days in fact, they knew that Our Lady would be the center of this, as in fact it made her the mother of the church itself. She was not present at the ascension, I suspect because it would have been rather painful and sad for her, even though she knew she would see him again, and that probably right soon. So for once they did as he asked, went back to the cynical and waited and prayed. They had no idea what they were praying or waiting for. They did as they were asked by God. When you think about it, we do a great deal of that in our lives too, don't we? We wait, we watch, we pray, and we, under, we are uncertain exactly what God intends us to do. But we have faith and hope in God and love of God, which means that we trust him absolutely, or at least we're meant to. St. Luke says they were all there together, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, so loud and strong that it filled the whole house. A preacher I heard once on this day likened it to the coming of the tornado in the Wizard of Oz. I'm not quite sure how pertinent or helpful that simile is, but there it is. That particular wind brought danger, and also a dreamy unreality. This one is not dangerous, and brings something very, very real. Tongues of fire lighted upon the heads of each, which showed courage, and also wisdom being transmitted to each of them. The first thing they noticed was that they could now speak several languages they had not known. This, of course, was a practical matter, as they were going to spread the news of this Jesus of Nazareth throughout the Roman Empire, and indeed, in St. Thomas's case, beyond. For the rest of this lesson, St. Luke dwells on this astonishing miracle. Jerusalem was always full of strangers from all over the Eastern Mediterranean and some from further away. Parthians, Medes, and Elamites from what we would call Iran or Persia. Dwellers of Mesopotamia, today's Iraq, Cappadocia, central Turkey near the Black Sea. Pontus, that part of Turkey where much later Constantinople would be built. Egyptians, people from Cyrene and Carthage in modern Libya, and strangers of Rome, presumably Latin speakers. There were both Jews and Gentiles, people from Crete and Arabia, one far away, the other rather closer. And the apostles could speak to all of them. The people themselves were amazed. How could they speak each of them to us in our own language? In other words, we aren't all muddling along in various abilities with Greek, the normal language of the Eastern Mediterranean. They can actually speak to us in our own languages. We tend to get rather stuck with this aspect of things, which, though an astonishing miracle, was something done so that they would, not be, they would be able to perform the tasks they were given. But as with many miracles, gifts and talents God gives us, these were given with a purpose. Here the Gospel of St. John steps in. Our Lord speaks to his disciples before the Passion. If someone loves me, he will keep my words. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our abode with him. Let us admit straightway that this is odd language. How can God make his abode in us? The strange and mysterious answer is that God the Holy Ghost will descend on them and will indeed dwell in them. This will actually also be the effect of the seven sacraments, and indeed the actions of the first Pentecost amount to their being consecrated the first bishops of the church, which came into being on this day. The body of Christ is now ascended into heaven, and two things will take his place until he comes again. The blessed sacrament, which is literally his body, which we receive and which sanctifies our churches, and the church, which is his mystical body on earth. That comes about as a result of what happens today. The Comforter, 
paraclete, we sometimes say, which is just Greek for the same thing, the Holy Ghost will be sent by the Father and in our Lord's name. This is a definite invocation of the existence of the Trinity. And he will teach you all things, bring things to your recollection, all the things I have said to you and taught you. And then he says something that I am sure they treasured and took away with them, and which I am sure occurred to 10 of the 11 and to many of those who followed them when they became martyrs. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And he then tells them what will happen with the ascension, even though they do not understand it until later. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said I go unto the Father. And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. This is essentially his assurance, and in fact guarantee that we should not be worried or troubled, for all is under God's reign and direction. God the Father rules all things. God the Son is true God and true man, and walked to the earth, still then teaching, though soon he will be crucified and rise to life again, and after 40 days ascend into heaven. God the Holy Ghost comes to bring his gifts to all mankind, and special gifts to his apostles on this day. The gifts on this day are extraordinary, courage and strength, not to mention suddenly being able to speak a large number of languages. What the Holy Ghost has to give to all of us is seven sacraments, each one administered by certain persons, each one with requirements to receive it so that it is properly received and used, each one with a full understanding of its outward and visible signs and its inward and spiritual graces and each one given only to those for whom it is proper and useful so that they can put it to the use that God intends. Holy baptism is the first sacrament, the building block, without which none of the others can be received. It makes us members of the body of Christ and remits original sin. Confirmation seals the final step of initiation into the church. It is the adult commitment which completes what was begun at baptism. With adults, it may follow baptism immediately. The Mass is celebrated to remember him until he comes again, to give us the Blessed Sacrament to receive as food, to make us more like him, and as a medicine for our souls on their journey to God. Confession exists so that when we commit serious sins, God's love and forgiveness can be expressed, not as a general idea, but as a specific guarantee that we are forgiven. It does not foster guilt, it does away with it. Matrimony is to seal the union between those who receive it, making of two one and creating the setting for children if it be God's will. Extra motion is to sanctify sickness, to bring God into what is always difficult and to bring healing or to allow us to face whatever comes. Holy Orders is the means by which God sets aside deacons to serve the church and their fellow men, priests to stay mass and administer the other four sacraments they are entitled to administer, and look after God's sheep, and bishops to teach doctrine and be right reverend fathers in God, as the prayer book calls them. So the first Pentecost, which we keep as Whitsunday every year, not only commemorates something that took place long ago, however important, but an event which continues to set the church on fire and bring grace to it. It is also the reminder that the Holy Ghost is not just a visitation from God to those men long ago. It is a visitation many, many times over our lifetimes, all of which bring us daily nearer God. As with the apostles, if we take advantage of that, there is no limit to what we can do for God, nor any obstruction to dwelling with him forever in heaven. Well, at least the only obstruction is in us, neither doing anything about it 
or resisting the invitation entirely. The apostles didn't, and neither should we.
throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your heart. sitting at the high right hand, poured forth is on this day the promised Holy Ghost upon the sons of adoption. Wherefore, with exceeding joy, the whole round world exalted, the heavenly virtues also, and the angelic powers, Together sing the majesty of thy glory, evermore praising thee and saying, Father, we humbly pray thee through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, and we ask 
that thou accept and bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and unspoiled sacrifices. We offer them unto thee first for thy holy Catholic Church, that thou art safe to keep it in peace, to guard, unite, and govern it throughout the whole world, with all the faithful guardians of the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, O Lord, thy servants and handmaids, and all who here around us stand, whose faith is known unto thee, and their steadfastness manifest, on whose behalf we offer unto thee, or who themselves offer unto thee this sacrifice of praise, for themselves and for all who are theirs, for the redemption of their souls, for the hope of their salvation and safety, and who offer their prayers unto thee, the eternal God, the living and the true. United in one communion, we celebrate the most sacred day of Pentecost, whereon the Holy Ghost appeared to the apostles in tongues innumerable. We venerate, moreover, the memory first of the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, the mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, as also of thy blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Thaddeus, Linus, Petus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian, and of all thy saints. Grant that by their merits and prayers we may in all things be defended with the help of thy protection, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. We beseech thee then, O Lord, graciously to accept this oblation from us thy servants and from thy whole family. We present it unto thee on behalf also of those whom thou hast felt safe to regenerate by water and the Holy Ghost, granting unto them remission of all their sins, order thou our days and thy, thy peace, and bid us to be delivered from eternal damnation and to be numbered in the fold of thine elect, through Christ our Lord. God say, for God, we beseech thee in all things to make this oblation blessed, approved, and accepted, a perfect and worthy offering, that it may become for us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Who the day before he suffered took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes lifted up to heaven, unto thee, God, his almighty Father, giving thanks to thee, he blessed, break, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat ye all of this, for this is my body. Likewise, after supper, taking also this goodly chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to thee, he blessed and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink ye all of it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the, of the new and eternal testament, the mystery of faith, which shall be shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. As oft as ye shall do these things, ye shall do them in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord, we thy servants and thy holy people also, remembering the blessed passion of the same Christ, thy Son, our Lord, as also his resurrection from the dead and his glorious ascension into heaven, do offer unto thine excellent majesty of thine own gifts and bounty, the pure victim, the holy victim, the immaculate victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. God safe to look upon them with a merciful and pleasant countenance, and to accept them even as thou didst felt safe to accept the gifts of thy servant, Abel the righteous, and the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and the holy sacrifice, the immaculate victim, which thy high priest Melchizedek offered unto thee. We humbly beseech thee, almighty God, command these offerings to be brought by the hands of thy holy angel to thine altar on high, in sight of thy divine majesty, that all we, who at this partaking of the altar shall receive the most sacred body and blood of thy Son, may be fulfilled with all heavenly benediction and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, O Lord, thy servants and handmaids, who have gone before us sealed with the seal of faith, and who sleep the sleep of peace. To them, O Lord, and to all that rest in Christ, we beseech thee to grant the abode of refreshing, of light, and of peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. 
To us sinners also, thy servants, who hope in the multitude of thy mercies, vouchsafe to grant some part in fellowship with thy holy apostles and martyrs, with John, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and with all thy saints, within whose fellowship we beseech thee admit us, not weighing our merit, but granting us forgiveness through Christ our Lord, through whom, O Lord, thou dost ever create all these good things, thou sanctify, quicken, bless, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, the Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory are thine. Throughout all ages, world without our air. Let of us pray, commanded by saving precepts, and taught by divine institution. We hear bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with
suitable to pray to be in the unity of the same Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Best of all, understanding, keep your hearts and minds and knowledge of love of God and His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Blessed of God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be announced to you and remain to you all. Amen. Lord, we with you. The beginning of the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Nel principio era la parola, e la parola era presso Dio, e la parola era Dio, e era nel principio con Dio. Tutte le cose sono state fatte per terzo di Lui, e senza di Lui nessuna delle cose fatte è stata fatta. E Lui era la vita, e la vita era la luce degli uomini, e la luce risplende nelle tenebre, e le tenebre non l'hanno compressa. Vi fu un uomo mandato da Dio, il cui nome era Giovanni. Questi venne come testimoni per rendere testimonianza alla luce, affinché tutti credessero per mezzo di Lui. Egli non era la luce, ma fu un mandato per rendere testimonianza della luce. Egli era la luce vera, che illumina ogni uomo che viene nel mondo. Egli era nel mondo, e il mondo fu fatto per mezzo di lui, ma il mondo non l'ha conosciuto. Egli è venuto in casa sua, e i suoi non lo hanno ricevuto, ma a tutti coloro che lo hanno ricevuto, egli ha dato l'autorità di diventare figli di Dio, a quelli che cioè, Ricordo non nel, nel suo nome, il quale non è nato, nato di sangue né da volontà di carne né da volontà di uomo, ma sono nati da Dio. E la parola si, fa, si è fatta carne ed ha abitato fra di noi, e noi abbiamo contemplato la sua gloria, come gloria dell'origenito proceduto dal Padre, piena di grazia e di verità. Thanks, Dio. 